What a night. I'm so all over. I don't believe it. It's the key from my dream. Gabriel cannot operate the key while it's on the table. Guten Morgen, Herr Knight. I'm cooking your Frühstück, a good German breakfast. Please, feel at home. The large brass key is ornately shaped and must weigh a pound at least. The key doesn't fit any of Gabriel's slots. I found this key in Wolfgang's bedroom. That is good, Herr Knight. Can I ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. You wouldn't know anything about this key I found in Wolfgang's bedroom now, would you? Key? Why, no, Herr Knight, I cannot say that I do. According to Gerda, the panels outlined the Schattenjäger's initiation ceremony. Not that the ceremony did anything for Gabriel, or did it? I did that yesterday, and look what happened. The door has a very large, very oddly shaped keyhole. Shit, the bits. Just by glancing at the spines, Gabriel can tell that this is one of the most priceless private collections he's ever seen. Talk about a bibliophile Shangri-La. Gabriel does not want to rearrange Wolfgang's private library. Gabriel is alone in the library. Two tall, narrow windows provide daylight to the dank room. More colorful tapestries soften the stone walls here. An ancient shield hangs on the wall. These texts are in German. You really have to learn the language now. The books have nothing verbal to communicate. Gabriel does not read German, at least not yet. A heavy wooden table occupies the center of the library. The candles for nighttime reading, perhaps. The window provides enough light at the moment. Benches accompany the library table. With all these books around, Gabriel would have a hard time sitting still. This part of the library contains books on the occult. Necromancy, witchcraft, demonology, lycanthropes. Research material any good Schattenjäger needs, Gabriel supposes. Although it probably isn't connected with the case at hand, Gabriel picks up an occult book. It's a book on lycanthropes, shape shifters. The book claims that lycanthropy is not uncommon. Supposedly, there's been evidence of apparently normal human beings turning into various beasts throughout history, including some famous trials from the Middle Ages. Fascinating. Gabriel's made a few women turn into beasts himself. 
Although it probably isn't connected with the case at hand, Gabriel picks up an occult book. There are many forms of vampirism. One is associated with a blood disorder and is not supernatural. Another, also non-supernatural, is based on a form of insanity. Of supernatural vampirism, there are also several varieties including inherited, communicative, and a vampirism used in black sorcery power drawing ritual. Then, too, there's always law school. These books are fascinating, but I'll have to hope I get time to read them all later. I don't see anything here that will help me with Tetela. These shelves display books on geography. A title catches Gabriel's eye. People's Republic of Benin by Lowell Kelly. Gabriel pulls out the book entitled People's Republic of Benin and scans through it. The People's Republic of Benin is an area of rich and diverse cultures and a proud heritage. Before slaving devastated many tribes, this area was populated by some of the oddest, fiercest, and most powerful tribes in tribal Africa. The Fans, the Dahomeys, and the terrible Agris. The book the Primal One by John Roots provides insight into these fascinating cultures. There are books on sociology in this part of the library. Gabriel recognizes a title, The Primal One by John Roots. Gabriel takes down The Primal Ones and opens it. In contrast with the peaceful nomadic tribes of Northern Africa, certain tribes of the Southwest were vicious and xenophobic. This part of Africa is called the Red Basin area because of the vast amount of bloodshed that's occurred there over the centuries. In this one area of Africa existed in a perpetual state of war and raiding some of the most powerful and efficient fighters the world has ever seen. Why did this region inspire such violent behavior? To understand, one must look even further back, see ancient roots of Africa by early days. These shelves contain history books. Gabriel recognizes a title. Ancient Roots of Africa by Earl Lee Dade. Gabriel removes Ancient Roots of Africa and browses through it. The ferocity of the tribes in the Red Basin region is traceable to their predecessors. In Egyptian time, 4000 to 2000 BC, this region was ruled by powerful sun worshippers. We know a little about this mysterious cult by the remnants of ruins far older and of a culture far more advanced than any that exist in Africa today. See Sun Worshippers by A. Curate. These shelves contain books and documents about the Ritter family. Journals, diaries, record books, deeds, something to peruse extensively when Gabriel has more time. Although it probably won't shed any light on Wolfgang's whereabouts, Gabriel picks up a book from the Ritter section. The book is entitled Maleus Maleficarum, The Witch Hammer dated 1486. It's a witch hunter's manual from the Inquisition. I'm not sure I'm really interested in knowing about some of my ancestors. Although it probably won't shed any light on Wolfgang's whereabouts, Gabriel picks up a book from the Ritter section. It looks like a very old diary of the wife of Ritter Schottenjäger. Interesting. 
It seemed that her husband, Juan Freiling Ritter, had rescued this woman from the clutches of the Marquis de Sade himself. This family tree really goes way back. The Ritter documents are fascinating, but Gabriel is determined to stay focused on the task at hand. These shelves contain books on religions of all kinds. A title catches Gabriel's eye. Sun Worshippers by A. Curate. Gabriel takes down Sun Worshippers and scans it. One of the earliest religious practices was that of Sun Worship. The most powerful cults of Sun Worshippers lived on the continent of Africa. The African sun god was violent and terrible, and so became his worshippers. They practiced a particularly bloody form of ritual sacrifice. The homeland of this ancient cult is still considered a sacred site of power. See Ancient Digs of Africa by Professor Seymour Shards. These shelves contain science books. Gabriel looks at the titles curiously, but they're all a bit too technical for his taste. Gabriel isn't interested in the science books. These shelves contain books on archaeology. Gabriel recognizes the title, Ancient Digs of Africa, by Professor Seymour Shards. Gabriel takes ancient digs of Africa and opens it. The most fascinating archaeological site in Africa is the Great Snake Mound in the People's Republic of Benin, located 50 miles south of the capital in the Red Basin. Like the Snake Mounds of North America, the origin and meaning of these great mounds remains a mystery, though clearly they were the results of profound and urgent spiritual belief. Unlike other snake mounds, the African example is a double snake mound, a small snake ring within a larger snake ring. The mound is thought to have housed an ancient temple. Although archaeologists have explored the mound site, the interior remains largely unchanged from ancient times. This is partially due to stringent government regulations and partially to local superstitions. The local people regard the mound with fear and will not go near it. A double snake ring? Gabriel flips furiously looking for a picture. Oh my God, it's a wheel within a wheel. Gabriel decides to hang on to the snake mound book. The archway leads to a short hall and the door to Wolfgang's bedroom. Ancient Digs of Africa by Professor Seymour Shards. Gabriel opens Ancient Digs of Africa. The double ring snake mound in the People's Republic of Benin. Creepy, isn't it? I found this book in the library. I think it might tell us where Wolfgang went. Africa? You think Wolfgang went to Africa? I know he did. Then I shall make you a plane trip right now, yeah? Well, I guess so. Good, good. My poor Wolfgang. You have money for the plane, yeah? Can't you pay for the fare? No. How Wolfgang bought his ticket, I do not know, but we have no money left. 
Have you no money, Herr Knight? Are you sure the Ritter estate can't pay? I manage Wolfgang's books. I am quite sure. Have you any money? Nope, sorry, I can't pay the plane fare. Oh, poor Wolfgang. If you can think of some way to get to Africa, let me know. That book with the snake mound. I know about the book, Herr Knight, but that does not get you to Africa and my poor Wolfgang. And can I ask you a few questions? Not now, Herr Knight. I can think only of poor Wolfgang in Africa. Gerda? Yeah? Have you thought of a way to pay for the plane? I know. We can use this credit card. Terrific! I will go make the call. Then, while we wait, breakfast. Does that mean I get some coffee now? You want I stay here, right? It's a long walk back to the city. Yeah, sure. Wait here, please. I may be a while, though. No problem. I could use a nap. Gabriel is on a rise overlooking an ancient snake mound in the People's Republic of Benin. If he is correct, this is the tribal homeland of Tetelo's people. There is no reason to manipulate the landscape. There is no one here but the jeep driver, Gabriel, and perhaps a lot of old ghosts. The jeep was one of several private taxis trying to pick up business at the airport. The driver knew exactly where the snake mound was located, and his rates were very cheap. I'm not leaving until I got what I came for. Gabriel has done all he needs to do with the Jeep at the moment. The Jeep driver has settled into his seat for a nap. The Jeep driver can do nothing more for Gabriel at the moment. The morning sky is still thick with the mist. The snake mound consists of an outer ring and an inner ring, two snakes eating their tail. The mound has stood here for centuries. Gabriel cannot affect it so easily. There you are, you bastard. The rooms of the snake mound are made entirely from earth, formed centuries before into a wheel by sun worshippers. Is anybody here? There is no answer. Vines, some as thick as Gabriel's wrists, hang down from the damp earthen ceiling. <laughs> Although he has a playful urge to swing on those vines, Gabriel would feel a bit childish doing so without a good reason. The vines are thick and tough. Taking them down would not be easy. Mummy-like figures in contorted poses appear to be the only residents here. Gabriel wonders, was this a burial mound? Or does their presence serve some ritualistic purpose? Gabriel cannot operate the mummy. Gabriel would rather not mess with that mummy. 
The mummy does not appear to be capable of speech. The dagger will not work on the mummies. They're already dead. Torches light the interior of the mound. Either they burn perpetually or someone recently lit them. Gabriel could extinguish the torches, but it would get very dark in here. The walls bear ancient paintings, the handiwork of the sun worshippers, no doubt. An etched stone is on the wall. This stone looks interesting. The stone is etched with a peculiar snake design. There doesn't seem to be any writing on the stone. Unless the snakes themselves are a code of some sort. I've already got it. An elaborate mural with a mass design has been carved into the wall in this room. The mural does not appear to have a mechanical function. Hmm, it's stuck. An etched stone is on the wall. Gabriel has the creeping sensation he's being watched. On the floor is an etched stone. In the center of the wall painting is a square sunken area. Holes about the size of a quarter appear in the wall there. A long rod lies in one corner of the room. It's shaped a little like a snake. The long rod is shaped like a snake. The head of the rod is the snake's angled triangular head. There are some strange symbols on the rod, but Gabriel doesn't know how to interpret them. The head of this snake rod fits perfectly into these quarter-size holes in the wall. Doesn't seem to do anything, though. I don't even want to think about what it is you want me to do with that rod. From off in the mound echoes a sound like the scuffle of a shoe. Duck.
it fits. A shadow flickers in the corner of Gabriel's eye. Gabriel has the creeping sensation he's being watched. A shadow flickers in the corner of Gabriel's eye. The rod fits into the hole in the stone. Nothing happens. An etched stone is on the wall. From somewhere off in the mound, Gabriel hears a soft click, then a rumble. Uh-oh. I have a feeling that did something. The mummy-like bodies have animated, and they appear intent on one thing, Gabriel. I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh, shit. Gabriel Knight, I presume. Uncle Wolfgang? In person. Now go to it, boy. I can't hold these creatures for very long, and there are more on the way. Go to what? The secret panel, boy. Those creatures are only alive while it's open. Close it, Gabriel, and hurry. Uncle Wolfgang cuts a dramatic figure in his long cape. He moves gracefully for a man in his 70s. What is it you want me to do? Find a way to close that passageway, Gabriel! The passageway has opened in the wall. There's a small hole on the wall inside the secret passage. I think I found something. Very good, Gabriel. Now stand back. Wow, the 
in a wheel. Yes, wheel within a wheel. Are you okay? You don't look so hot. I'm fine, Gabriel. The wheel. You dreamt it? Yeah, and you? Yes. I must congratulate you on the Three Snakes connection. I had missed it. You will make a wonderful Schottenjäger. Who? Me? Yes. It is a long path, my boy. I myself have still the last of my three quests to meet. But let us see what is here. You have found the heart of the apple. But it might be poison still. Uncle Wolfgang looks frail and shaken, but determined to make a good impression for Gabriel. It's nice to finally have someone around who knows what the hell's going on. I know, my boy. I know. Can we talk? Uh, we probably have a little time here. Yes, all right. Tell me about yourself. This is not the time nor the place, Gabriel. I, I'm sorry, but I assure you, my life has not been all that instructive. Do you think Tetelo's remains are here? I have a feeling that they are, Gabriel. Is there anything else you can tell me about Tetelo? I can feel her presence here. I wouldn't be surprised if she knew we were violating her sanctum. What can you tell me about Schattenjägers? We have not the time to discuss that here. You have started the path. I can see it in your eyes. You must trust yourself and be true to your inner voice. The good voice, Gabriel. You know it when you hear it. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I don't know enough about it to offer you any advice, but be careful when you return there, Gabriel. Any ideas on where the Getty Houndfuhr in New Orleans might be? Leider nicht. You will have to try to find it when you return to New Orleans. You must not go in alone, though. Even if we find the talisman, it will be quite a battle. Does this mean anything to you? That is Gunter Ritter's journal. Read it carefully, Gabriel. It may help you to make sense of all this. Why would Wolfgang want to see his own phone number? Why would Wolfgang want to see his own letter? Does this mean anything to you? It looks like a letter written many years ago to Heinz from our father. Poor Papa tried to get Heinz to come home, but Heinz refused. Does this mean anything to you? Of course. It is an old photograph of your grandfather, Heinz, myself and our father. Does this mean anything to you? Ah, the Gedi Vevi. Very nice, Gabriel. Does this mean anything to you? It is the Ritter Dagger. You did well to take it, Gabriel. It belongs to you now. Does this mean anything to you? Of course. It is the key to my library. Does this mean anything to you? Yes, it is a book from my library. With your information, it helped me locate the snake mound. Does this mean anything to you? No, Gabriel. This is the inner wheel of the snake mound. Though similar in appearance to the outer wheel, there's a sense of evil sanctity and secrecy about this room that is very different indeed. Uncle Wolfgang is the only person here to talk to. 
thick vines hang from the ceiling in the inner wheel. Torches light the inner wheel. The inner wheel is decorated with mass murals, similar to the ones that hid the secret passageway door. The doorway leads to the secret passage and from there back to the outer wheel. When Gabriel is ready to leave, he can just walk down the secret passageway. I'm not opening that secret passage door again until I'm ready to leave the snake mound. Look at that table. Yes, it is very old. There is a story being told through the carvings on the side. Can you make it out? Tribesman discovers a snake mound hidden in the jungle. He manages, after much time, to find the secret entrance to the inner wheel. In this room, he bows down to a small idol of some sort. The thing is radiating, like a sun. That explains the source of the Getty's tribal power. They found this mound and the idol in it. Where the idol came from originally is hard to say, but it is definitely older than the Gettys. The idol was probably once kept in this table, but they would have it with them now. It must be destroyed. Gabriel would like to operate the table, but how? Gabriel would like to open the table, but it will not be that easy. The table's lid fits heavily on the base. At the seams, there are two large holes on either side. On top of the lid is a trough. What's that trough for? I saw that. This is undoubtedly a sacrificial table. That trough is for... Oh, that's sick. The lid does not seem to operate. Should we try this lid? I suppose it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not no help, Gabriel. I don't think it would open so easily, though. Were we ten strong men? On the wall is a rack containing two long iron bars. What about these iron bars? Good idea. Let me help you. Perhaps these holes. There. That single bar does not look like it will give much leverage. Let's get the other one. There. Both of the iron bars have been inserted into the holes in the tabletop. Let's try to lift this top. I know it's in there. Yes, it is in there. I have not felt this powerful since, well, ever. Why won't the damn lid come off? It is a sacrificial table. It can probably only be triggered by the proper use of that trough there. With a heart. Oh, great. Where are we going to get a heart? Gabriel, you must take the talisman and be shot, nigger. 
You performed the ritual and dreamt as a dragon, no? Yes, I did. But you're the current Schattenjäger. I only did that because... Because you were driven to it. I have done nothing with this title for many years. Even in my prime, I had few cases. Oh, if my life had a purpose, it was to bring you to this point. But I have no idea what I'm doing. It is not a science, Gabriel. It is instinct. And you have it in your blood. Trust it. The castle is yours now. It has many documents and records which will help you in the future. Well, thanks for the confidence. But what about this table? I want you to go into the next room and get a heart from that dead creature on the floor. Will that work? Doesn't that need to be... fresh? Let us try. Perhaps there's some of the old Ritter magic left. Go on. Those bars are not going to do anything without some fleshy assistance. Can we talk? Not now, Gabriel. You must do as I asked, please. What if we try... Get the heart, Gabriel. Please. A mummy lies on the floor, apparently having fallen inanimate where it stood when the secret passage door closed. Gabriel has had enough of those creatures operating. The mummy is not going to say anything. Gabriel cannot get the mummy's heart with that. Gabriel cannot open the mummy with his bare hands. Great. My first job is shotting Jaeger. Cutting up dead monsters. Wolfgang! No! No! Hello. You gonna pay for this, you bitch! Why did he go to Africa, Gertie? <sighs> no, it's okay. I'm just a little anxious. No, they haven't. I just need to talk to Gabriel. After arranging for a shipment of Wolfgang's body back to Rittersburg, Gabriel returns to New Orleans. He carries with him the Ritter talisman. He has not heard from Grace for over 24 hours, and he could not reach Malia by phone. And although he has some idea of what he is coming home to attempt, he still has no clue where to attempt it. Or does he? I'm home. Grace? Oh, no! Grace! Grace's chair looks hastily abandoned. There's a note on the desk. The note is from Malia. It says, Gabriel. I hope you survive long enough to get this. Tetelo knows you have the talisman. Your life is worth nothing, my love. I fight to save you, but she controls things far more than I. She has taken grace. 
Return the talisman and leave New Orleans forever. If you don't, I can't help you. Please. I can't bear to see you die. Please believe me. I love you. Malia. Who? Who's there? I have the talisman. Yeah? Good for you. I got a headache. You? Don't come near me. You're dead. Oh, <laughs> was that you at the tube? You should have said something. You mean you weren't dead, you son of a bitch? Do I look dead? No, no, don't answer that. I was searching the tomb. When I heard someone coming, I broke the light and got in the drawer. Sorry I brained you, but I thought you were one of them. Christ, you about killed me. I said I was sorry. Besides, I owed you one for stealing my badge. If it makes you feel any better, I lost my wallet that day. Your wallet? Oh, I guess you're right. We are even. Like I said. Anyway, we shouldn't stand out here and gab. Someone on the street might see us. Let's go in back and talk. Okay. Now let's talk. Not while Mosley is here. Mosley looks nervous and tired. So, what's up? This is no time for chit-chat. Get serious. By the way, I found your wallet. Really? Great. What a pal. I found your credit card. Thanks. Oh, uh, you didn't put anything on this, did you? Who? Me? Yeah, sorry. All right, let's talk. Tell me about yourself. I'm scared shitless, that's all you need to know. You know, mostly, don't even start with me, Knight. I've been through too much for you lately. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. What should we do about Grace? Them voodoo people have taken her, the goddamn bastards. We have to find her and save her, and we can't count on the police department for any help. What should we do about Grace? I told you, we gotta find her. We sure ain't gonna help her by sitting around here. So, fill me in on what you've been doing for the past five days. I've been getting smart, that's what. They got me running, I'll admit. But the day a bunch of drum-banging, mumbo-jumbo chant magicians can catch old Lightfoot Mosley is the day I die. Can't argue with that logic. Now these guys have it wired, I tell you. From the mayor to a couple of major judges, right down to the beat cops. The Gettys are untouchable from that angle. But once I really start digging, it was like I could see clearly. These guys are into everything that happens in this city, and most people are scared shitless of them, or they don't know about them at all. Let me fill you in on what I've learned in the past five days. Okay, have at it. Well, Malia Getty is the head of the cartel. Dr. John is her right-hand man. I learned that much. You sure know how to pick them, Knight. Uh-huh. She's not really responsible, though, because during these ceremonies, she's ridden by the spirit of her ancestor, Tetelo. You don't say. It's true. Anyway, I have something, a talisman, that I can use against them. It'll help, but they probably still have a power source somewhere in their hound fool. Also, this whole thing kind of ties in with my nightmare scene and my family history. My family does this shadow hunting thing, and about 300 years ago... Look, don't confuse me, okay? You worry about all that metaphysical stuff, and I'll just try and catch the bad guys. Yeah, you'd never believe me anyway. What can you tell me about voodoo? Oh, you're the big expert now, not me. This stuff is way beyond anything I was looking into at the beginning of this case. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Well, you and I know who did him, don't we? But we've got to prove it to somebody who'll listen. 
What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? Talking about that won't help at this point. Do you know anything about Veves? I know what you told me about that Getty one. It's all I need to know. And do you know anything about a secret voodoo hound fool? You know where it is? I have an idea. Well, great. Let's talk about it when we make our plan. Let's make a plan. What do you think we should do? We need to find the headquarters of the Getty Cartel, rescue Grace, and dig up some concrete evidence so that I can take this straight to the FBI. Sounds easy. Uh-huh. Do you have any idea where their headquarters might be? Perhaps. Well, you do seem to have a knack for sniffing out this voodoo stuff. Why don't you see if you can locate it for sure? Meanwhile, I've got some things I've got to do. I'll meet you there later. How will you find it? Damn, that's right. If only I had the tracker from my office. I have it. Really? Good going. You give it to me and leave a signal device at the entrance to the headquarters. All right. What was that plan again? Jeez. You're gonna go locate the headquarters. I'm gonna go get some supplies. You're gonna signal me when you found the headquarters. I'll meet you there. We go inside, find Grace, collect some evidence, and get out of there. Oh, yeah, right. Here's the tracker. Great. Uh, don't forget to leave the signal device near the entrance to the home floor. And be careful. You too. Gabriel can't even think about food, much less what might be in that refrigerator while Grace is missing. There's no time for that. Grace is missing. That is painting. I bet Grace bought it back from Bruno herself. Gabriel checks the drawer again, just in case life as we know it changed significantly since he last looked. If I need any legal tender where I'm going, It'll more likely be my soul. It just wouldn't be the same without Grace here. Times Picayune, dated June 28, 1993. The weather service is baffled by the series of bizarre storms that rocked the south yesterday. Twenty died and close to a hundred were injured. The storms only accentuate the bad luck that seems to have gripped the south. The crime rate for the past three days has peaked to unprecedented levels. And there have been 50 reports of food poisoning in New Orleans alone. In other words, keep your head down, folks, and pray that August will return us to sanity. Warily, Gabriel reads his horoscope for the day. Gird thyself with mercy. Arm thyself with righteousness. The final hour awaits. There's a school teacher somewhere who's damn confused. The coffee has already been made. Mmm, good coffee. Gabriel considers taking Grace's coat with it. But he decides against it. It's time to stay in New Orleans and face the music. 